Hello, Nate Mac Mountain Lions. I'm excited to introduce to you today our wonderful team of Nate Mac specialists. These teachers are dedicated to ensuring that your learning is well-rounded and includes the important subjects of art, library, music, social and emotional learning, and PE, physical education. At Nate Mac, these are important subjects, just like reading, math, writing, science, and all the others. Students are graded on these content standards for each, and grades are part of students' progress reports and report cards. We hope students will always do their very best to learn as much as they can in each area. Each specialist will now take a few minutes to introduce themselves and share their programs and expectations. Thank you. Hello. Good evening. I'm Miss Harmony, the art teacher at Nate Mac. Here's a slideshow we put together for you. I'm going to breeze right through this for you. Little tiny bit of background. My 15th year of teaching art at Nate Mac. I do love what I do. I feel art has a host of benefits for kids and adults, all ages. Um, not only do we get to express ourselves and use our hands, we collaborate with other people and we focus on life skills and just becoming better humans. And I feel even though we don't have these uh, rules like we would in the classroom, I put those on there. Anyhow, this slide mentions the basic outline of any art program where we talk about aesthetics, we learn how to criticize, we include history of art and artists, and obviously production, the creating aspect of making art. I wanted to mention the broad outline for long range plans are basically listed here. Why do we make art? What should we be getting out of it? As far as um, structure, this is how I'm going to base like four weeks, monthly long themes. And um, there will be variety as far as what kids can make and turn in this year because of access to materials and supplies and um, availability. So take all of that to heart that I do understand that that is, that is a big thing for a lot of families. The fact of the matter is we do have to grade. This is a required subject. If students do not attend and they don't participate and they don't turn anything, I have grade them accordingly. So I hope that the art lessons that I create on your pot are going to be engaging enough, you like it enough. It is new for me, so I hope that it's, you know, it's that learning curve, but I'll get better at it, I'm sure. Um, we still are facing grades, a specialist with E, S's, and N's. This is the basic rubric that I have been following for years that kind of tells people what I look for as far as the quality of the project that's turned in. If you're uh, needing to review behavior policies, same rules apply in specialist classrooms as they do in regular and school environment. So if I, I'm doing live meets and um, there's a problem, know that it is also taken seriously. As far as this slide, it's probably redundant. I did mention uh, a, a creative way of making artwork this year is using things around your house, found objects, some um, household items even. If you were, if you already finished Art Week Lesson 2, you already saw this list and ignore it. If you have everything that you need, please contact me. If you don't, if you need something and uh, I can help you, I surely will. Uh, this hasn't um, gone into effect yet, but I wanted to mention that I am going to try this out and have live meets where kids can see me face to face. On Monday, we're gonna attempt to see kinder and first. On Wednesday, second and third, and Friday for fourth and fifth. So when you go to Google Meets, if you just type in that corresponding code for your grade and your day of the week, I will be there Monday, Wednesday, and Friday from two to 2.30. So 
So hopefully they can show me their projects if they have questions for anything. Um, if they just want that FaceTime with another teacher, I will be there. And, and also potentially we could do drawings together to keep it basic. Um, this last slide is just the contact information. And, and again, if I didn't cover anything that you wanted me to go over, please contact me. I'm available just as every other teacher during the week. Um, virtual hours are at the end of the day. If you're not familiar with the Instagram page that I created last year, it's art at Nate Mac. You can send me DMs there as well. Obviously, get on through Google Classroom. If you are a, a parent with a student who really wants to share their work on top of turning it into me, please send me DMs. You can email images. You can go on the Instagram. But um, I encourage you to do so because I will totally repost. And also, um, Miss Juliana was starting a newspaper where I want to feature students and their artwork. Um, if I don't get many submissions because they need to be via the parents submitting them and sharing because I know then they'll have permission. That um, I'm, I'm thinking the students who do... Um, the entire lessons in their entirety and also uh, can be turned in for drawings and I can announce maybe um, a happy mail that I'll be sending home in the newspaper feature if I don't get a lot of submissions. But I'm hoping that I do. So hopefully art is um, going to be enjoyable this year. Please contact me if you have any questions, concerns, and hopefully we're all here to support one another. And thank you for for all the support, parents, if you um, encourage your kid to attend and participate because our programs depend on our relationships with you as well. So thank you for all of your help and support. Um, have a good night. Hello, I'm Ms. Giuliano and I'm your STEM Library Learning Commons Specialist. So I'm your librarian, and on this slide you see myself and you see Mrs. Harris, our wonderful library aide. We're both looking forward to a wonderful year with all of our students. Welcome to the 2020 year. Let's take a look at what library looks like this year. First, we have library lessons. Our library lessons will focus on reading and literacy, research and resources, and technology skills. It is vital that you stay up on your library lessons because I work hand in hand with your child's classroom teacher. So they might have a project coming up in a few weeks and they've asked me to teach them a way to research or getting books together in the library or a specific technology skill. So they will need to work and practice and learn that skill before the teacher needs them to actually use that skill in their classroom. So if they've gotten behind on their lessons, they won't be ready for what their teacher will be doing when the time comes. So be sure to stay up on your lessons. Secondly, let's talk about grading. I will mark attendance, and that is when your child marks their assignment as done. And report to that to the classroom teacher so they know that they've attended specials. They need to also make sure that they do the work inside of the lessons. That is what I grade. So when you're getting your child's library grade, that isn't just for showing up. We base our grades on the Nevada State Library Standards, and that is what their grades are based on. Finally, there are other supports in the library as well. We support you through curbside checkout. We're gonna be talking about that in a minute. I'm also a technology support at the school. If you're struggling with technology, I'll show you where you can find me. And finally, I'm always here if you need reading recommendations as well as um, help with AR if your teacher can't provide that support. Curbside checkout. So right now we have fourth and fifth graders doing curbside checkout. This week we start second and third graders with curbside check checkout. They're getting the lessons this week. And then finally, kindergarten and first grade will start the week of September 14th and their lessons will prepare them for how to do checkout as well. The important thing about curbside checkout is that you don't come pick up your books until I email you and tell you your books are ready. Until I email you, 
do not come pick up books. Once you get that, that email that says your books are ready, that's when you can come to one of our times to pick up your book. Curbside pickup is Mondays, 8.30 to 11.30, Wednesdays, 12.30 to 3.30, and Fridays, 8.30 to 11.30. Again, don't come until you've gotten your email saying your books are ready. This handout will come home with your child when they have learned how to do curbside checkout and they are ready to begin. If you need support from me technology-wise, you can come to the Nate Mac website, click the blue button that says Tech T Tutorials and Support, and if you click on one of these buttons, there will be short tutorial videos under five minutes that will teach you how to do lots of technology things if you're stuck. If you're having trouble with your computer, start at troubleshooting. This might help you work the problem out. Finally, if you need a password reset, something like that, or just some support with your technology that one of the videos is not helping you with, if you click this button, you will reach me by email. Please make sure you state your child's name, their student number, and how I can help you. Finally, if you're looking for resources, also head to the Nate Mac website. Go to the Student Hub, and this is where you will find how to take an AR test. The kids will click this middle button to take an AR test. Here are all sorts of books that can be read by your child, and their teacher will be teaching them how to sign on. There are tutorial videos there for some of these that require a password. And finally, Destiny Discover is how your child will be learning how to do curbside checkout as well as find lots of research resources on the internet. So we'll be talking a lot about Destiny Discover this year. PebbleGo is another great research program that we have purchased for our school for your kids. So be sure to go through all of those research and exploration tools. We're looking for a Look forward to a wonderful year together in the library. And if you need anything, I'm only an email away. I look forward to a wonderful year and I'll see you on Tuesdays in the library online. Bye for now. Hello, Nate Mac families. Welcome to Nate Mac Physical Education. This is Coach Spencer and I'm pleased to be the physical education teacher here at NAMAC. This will be my 16th year teaching PE at NAMAC, and I've been here so long because I enjoy the students and I love the area, and I don't want to be anywhere else. Also, we have Coach Al, who is our adapted PE teacher, who I have worked with for the last several years, and we have Coach Jimmy, who is the PE assistant. He actually was at NAMAC um, for years and then went to a new school and we're happy to have them back this year. So Coach Spencer, Coach Al, and Coach Jimmy. Okay, hey, when is PE? For PE, it'll be everybody on Wednesday at 1015. So this year is virtual. It's a little different. It's taking some time to get used to, but we're going to make it work and we're going to try to have lots of activities so that the kids are active throughout the day. So the PE time and how to get it, your child will go into their Canvas, their Google Classroom, and their schedule is all there. So Wednesday, 10.15 is when they're going to be logging in for PE. How do they get to the specials? So on their home page, in their Canvas, they are going to find the special page. Click on it, and it's going to look like what you see on the screen. The only thing is you are going to click on your classroom teacher. So if the teacher was Ms. Davis, we would click on Ms. Davis, and that brings you to the special page. If you'd like to email us separately, then you would click on our picture down here, okay? Also, you're gonna find in that same spot how to access recess. For recess, we have activities planned for 20 minutes every day, Coach Jimmy and myself. And we basically just try to have stuff for them to do to keep moving for 20 minutes to get that exercise in. If they don't want, if your student doesn't want to do a certain activity that day, that's okay to skip it and just say, find something to do that you're gonna be moving and active. So that's how you get on that. Make sure you click on the recess link to get there. Okay, the whole goal for this year 
as we're starting virtually, we have guidelines that we're going to follow. The guidelines are from the American Alliance for Health, PE, Recreation, and Dance. So our first guideline, children, our goal is to, for children to accumulate at least 60 minutes on all or most days of the week. So because we only have 50 minute, one 50 minute class, we have to build in other things. So we built in recess and daily stuff. The teachers are also gonna be working on stuff like go noodles and fitness activities throughout the day to give them breaks. Guideline two, children should par participate in several bouts of physical activity lasting 15 minutes or more each day. So that's where the recess comes in. And then other times that you could think of throughout the day. Guideline three, children should participate each day in a variety of age appropriate physical activities designed to achieve optimal health, wellness, fitness and performance benefits. So a lot of the stuff at home when they're playing and doing kid stuff, that is fine. That's age appropriate in his physical activities. So keep thinking of ways that your kids can play and stay active at home also. Guideline four, children for extended periods of inactivity are discouraged. So a lot of sitting around, doing nothing, the video games, that sort of thing, two hours or more, they are discouraging. So try to think of ways that just simple things to get up, get active throughout the day. Okay, and then the last thing, the 60 minutes may come from accumulation of PE through physical education stuff that we have on the websites or open play and classroom breaks. So lots of ways to get your physical activity. And also a lot of kids, they are doing stuff outside of school like sports and activities like that. So to start off the year, we are just making it pretty simple to start giving you activities to do for the 50 minutes and then recess ideas and activity ideas. If you have any questions, I put my email up here. The first one, S-P-E-N-C-I-J at N-V. And then I also put Mr. Johnson's for Adapted PE because his goal is to make sure that students that with disabilities are included with their general peers. So we w might see him in lessons working with us. And basically he is another co-teacher. So if you need to contact us, that is the contact information. And other than that, it was good to present to you. And if you have any questions, feel free to email me and I look forward to working with you. Thank you. My name is Karen Ryan and I'm the school counselor at Nate Mac. This is my fourth year at Nate Mac. And as far as my background goes, this I have seven years of teaching experience and 17 years of counseling experience. The school counseling program at Nate Mac is based on the American School Counseling Association model and Clark County School District standards. It includes a variety of services for all students and covers growth in academic, career, emotional, and social development. As a school counselor, I'll be offering small group counseling sessions with parent permission that focus on different topics such as divorce, grief, friendship skills, and anger management. Please contact me if you believe your child needs assistance in any of these areas. I'll ha be happy to work with you. I'll also be available to meet or virtually meet with students individually to help them adjust to school or if they need help with personal issues. I will provide referral assistance to programs in the community such as the three square weekend food bags and school bell clothing program. So please contact me if you are in need of any outside assistance. I've been posting classroom lessons based on this book, which is called The Seven Habits of Happy Kids. The program uses stories to focus on principles such as responsibility, planning ahead, respect for others, teamwork, and balance. If you have any questions about the counseling program, please call me at 799-7760, extension 4301, or you can email me at ryanka at nv.ccsd.net. I look forward to working together with you, and I hope we all have a great year. Thank you.
Hello, Nate Mac family. I am Miss Jusin, the music teacher. Please call me Miss J, and welcome to the virtual music open house. I am going to try to keep this as short as possible. So, if you, so I'm not going to be reading every single slide. I'm only going to be pointing out the important things. So, if at any point of this presentation of the video, um, you need to hit pause and read through the slides, please feel free to do so. Um, first things first, though, parents, thank you so much for all of your hard work in getting your student to music lessons. I know not everybody has access to music lessons yet, but I have seen, I've seen a lot of students actually going in and doing the work and answering questions, and I'm really thankful that they're enjoying music class right now. A little bit about me. I was born in Seoul, South Korea, and I grew up there till I was about in fifth grade. So I do speak um, fluent Korean. If you are a Korean parent and you need to discuss your student in Korean with me or with me and the, your student's homeroom teacher, please contact me. I can help translate. I received my Bachelor of Music in Music Education with concentration in voice from University of Nevada, Las Vegas and I received my master's in education and learning and technology from Western Governors University. And the funny thing is that happened only a few months before everything shut down. So I guess I was planning ahead. Didn't even know that was going to happen. But there are five music standards in music, rhythm, melody, harmony, form, and expressive qualities. And they are the same. Um, it, the, those five stay the same K through five. What happens is in kindergarten, they're expected to have, they're, they're, they have less standards and they're less complicated, complex standards. And as they go through first, second, third, fifth, fourth, and fifth grade, they just keep building on those skills until they are able to do things like playing recorder by reading music and things like that. So if you would like to pause and read more about them, feel free to do so. I'm going to move along. Uh, Nevada has four strands of the Nevada academic content standards for fine arts. They are create, perform, respond, and connect. Can actually. <laughs> oh, blah, blah. And create, respond, and connect, it's actually easy to do with like paper and pen kind of assignment or just answering questions and filling out forms and things like that. But for perform, I actually do need students to show what they're able to do by performing. So we're going to be using things that are listed here. Let me read a little bit. Students will be graded based on the work they show through Google Classroom including Nearpod, Flipgrid, and other Google tools. So for performance, one performing strand, we're going to be mainly using Flipgrid. And I will be showing students how to use that. And hopefully they already know because they've had other classes that use the same tool. Just watching the videos and clicking on Nearpod and, and saying Mark gets done on Google Classroom is not going to give them a passing grade. It'll show me that they've accessed it. Yes, and I and if and that I expect them to be able to do the work because if they finished it, that means they have done everything. Students are expected to do the work at their own pace, but it is important that they do the work each week. It's important that they do a little bit each week as opposed to being like, oh, I forgot to do music for three weeks in a row, so let me just skip the two previous ones and let me just go to the next one because the lessons are cumulative. They, they build up. They need to be able to... To be able to do the current week's lesson, they need to have done the previous week's lessons. So skipping some lessons will make it harder for students to comprehend and perform. E stands for exceptional progress, performing above grade level expectation. S is for satisfactory progress, performing at grade level expectation. And N is needs improvement, performing at below grade level expectation. To use kindergarten as example, kindergartners are expected to keep a steady beat. If they can listen to a piece of music and feel the beat and keep it by clapping or nodding or anything, then that's an S. If they cannot keep a steady beat, then that's an N. If they can make patterns on top of while keeping a steady beat, then that's an E because that's more of a first, second grade um, standard expectation. If your student has an N in anything, 
they can redo the assignment. They can try again and try to get an S or an E. You just have to let me know. Um, hey, can uh, your student can let me know? You can let me know. Can we try again? The answer is always going to be yes. Instruments. Let's be honest. Students love coming to music because of instruments. A large part of in-person music education consists of using instruments. Since we do not have enough instruments deployed to families, we will be mainly using virtual instruments found online, like a virtual xylophone to play the melody, and we will be using found sound to create music. Found sound is literally what it sounds like. Um, it's sound that's found around you. So families, I'm going to ask that you determine what's okay for your student to use as an instrument and what's considered off limits. If you see something in their work area that they shouldn't be drumming on, please let them know, take it away, or let them know they can't use that so they know because I can give examples of what they can use as found sound, but students always come up with things that are way better than my ideas. So I wouldn't be able to um, list them all and be like, okay, don't use this, don't use that. Uh, just because I also don't know what you have at home. Okay, this is part of our last thing. Grades three through five, especially at third graders, are so excited to use recorders. Since second grade, they asked me about recorders, and yes, we will be using recorders this year. If you don't have one, do not worry. Through a successful funding project on Donors Choose, we have been able to purchase 200 brand new recorders for students to check out and, and borrow during distance learning. These will be checked back in at the end of the year, um, but you can keep them at home as long as we are doing distance learning or until the end of the year so the students have something to use. When we are ready to deploy the recorders, you'll receive more information as part of the music lesson. So please make sure to continue doing those lessons on Fridays. And if you are a student in, in third through fifth grade, you already have one or you've got an older sibling who no longer uses one and you wanna just keep using the one that you have at home, great, that's probably a better idea because I will be honest with you, these recorders that we bought are not the best quality. So the one you might you have at home is probably better. But I'm not saying this is bad. This is perfectly fine for our purpose. I am going to do a special shout out to these four of our staff members. They actually donated to the Donors Choose project and they, they funded probably close to half of the entire project, just the four of them. They are Miss, Miss Giuliano, our wonderful librarian, Mrs. Jinta, our gate teacher, Mrs. Haney, our oh so patient. And, oh, and I have to say thank you to her so much because third grade is when they start playing recorders and she's been through <laughs> years of her students playing recorder not great, but she still donated so that our students can have recorders. Thank you, Mrs. Haney and Mrs. Snyder, our wonderful CTT. So thank you to those four, four um, teachers for helping us reach our goal of buying 200 recorders for, for our third through fifth graders. Anyway, that's the end of my presentation. I know I didn't spend too much time actually talking about what our lessons will look like and things like that. But if you have any any questions at all, please reach me at joosih at nv.cc 